Okay, let's take a close-up look at the Voigtlander 40 millimeter. Um, like I said, this is like a trans, uh, transitional lens uh, from Nikon that has uh, CPU contacts. Um, the uh, front lens cap, just like a Leica, is a 39 millimeter. Now it's uh, actually an ounce and a half uh, heavier than the 50 millimeter pancake Nikkor. Nikon never, at any point in time, made a lens this exquisite. Now, if you're asking, well, this is a $50, $60 lens, this one's $450, what makes it $450? Um, the precision and uh, the quality of this Whitlander 40 millimeter is divine. It is nothing short. It is far better than uh, most all of current Leica's lenses and it is uh, exactly reminiscent of some of the $10,000, $15,000 uh, high precision exquisite quality uh, Leica lenses that I used to mess around with at Beach Photo and Video. Um, you can typically find it used for about $300. I know that's a lot of money um, but this lens has an insanely huge cult following. Um, I should have bought it years ago. I've had this lens now for two years. I recently purchased another one because I'm worried about the company maybe going out of business while I have no indication of that. Um, this is a, a little known lens. Now you can see I have it on the front of a Nikon a D750, how extremely small this is. Manual focus only. Now let's take a look here. This is the lens cap, whereas most lens caps are actually flared outwards or directly straight out. Let's take a look. I'll show you here. So if you actually are using this on your camera, if you stuck your uh, grubby fingers out in front, you typically you'd actually hit this lens cap instead of the front element. This is an F2 lens. The front element is aspherical. It's six elements in five groups. The total weight on this lens is insanely heavy. It's very dense. It's 7.3 ounces. Like I said, with uh, the lens cap removed, it's approximately four millimeters shorter than the 50 millimeter pancake. Why is this lens so exquisite? This really kind of gets back into what if you could drop it back to fundamental, pure and joy and excitement of, uh, you know, uh, simplex photography. What would define, if you had an excellent DSLR, what would define an exquisite lens that would last multiple lifetimes, that is just a joy to use and is dreamy and is the absolute exquisite, perfect choice for both full frame or DX? 40 millimeters is just about uh, 2 millimeters shy of what perfect human vision is. Now we think of 50 millimeters as a perfect uh, normal lens, quote unquote, for full frame, which is, is connotative rather than denotative. However, closer to human vision is uh, the 40 millimeter. Now on DX, this would be an equivalent of a 60 millimeters angle of interception on APS-C crop sensor uh, Nikon. So if you had this on a D7100, for example, it'd be roughly a 60 millimeter, just, just a hair over quote unquote normal. Um, so it's perfect for a full frame or uh, for DX use. And since it is like an AIP uh, Nikkor lens, which is basically a manual focus lens with the CPU contacts that tells the camera what it is sitting on, is perfect for use on a D3000 or 5000 series camera. This is literally one lens, as long as you don't drop it and roll it down the hill or something, it will last multiple lifetimes. I mean, the precision on that, you want to ask why this lens is $450 new or typically $300, $330 used, the precision on this is unmatched. Unmatched, exquisite perfection. It just is. Now, this is a 52 millimeter, so it's normal here. And as you can see, this is the lens cap, and here is uh, the uh, little um, quote-unquote macro, it's not really a macro attachment, it actually screws in uh, to the lens hood. Not to the lens, but to the lens hood itself. Um, uh, 15, millimeter, uh, 15 inches, a minimum focusing distance roughly, now with the uh, macro lens uh, on uh, the lens hood, it's uh, 10 inches, so 10 inches minimum. Um, yeah, this is, I don't know, most people have never held an exquisite uh, Leica $10,000 plus lens from uh, back in 15 years ago when they really did it right, uh, but this, this is every bit as silky smooth and uh, absolute perfection and just, uh, it has a huge cult following. Uh, I'll give you the Flickr link if you want, want to take a look at uh, some of the countless thousands of images taken with this lens. I love it. It is a dream. Um, like if it's a rainy day or something, I need to pack a DSLR underneath my coat. You know, this is shorter than the 50 millimeter. 
The saturation and uh, the depth rendition on this lens is exquisite. Is it better than the 50 millimeter? Oh yes, it damn well is. I mean, that's not my opinion, that's hardcore fact. How much better is it than the 35 millimeter f2? In corner sharpness, it is definitely better. Um, there is a little bit of vignetting at f2, big deal. So this is f2 to f22. Now, just like the pancake lens, there's no uh, locking ring uh, for locking it in at f22. So if you accidentally slip the aperture ring out of f22 to 18 or whatever, your camera is going to say FEE, F-E-E, -E, which means that uh, you need to have it always uh, on your DSLR at f22. Now, the great thing with uh, using uh, this lens is you can use it in program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, or manual. Let me take it off the camera. So you can take a closer look at the lens, and it's tough to get on and off. I've maybe got about 15,000 shots with this lens, and the reason it's so tough to get on and off is because it's so precision made, it just fits so tight, you can't even squeeze a thought between uh, the mount on the back of this lens and the mount on the camera. Here you can see it in its divine uh, anorexic profile. Like I said, six elements and five groups. Uh, the serial number is a laser etched here on the back of the mount. It's made in Japan and uh, like I said, Nikon has never produced anything this, this good. So, uh, jokingly, I give this lens a new class. I call it, uh, it's not, <laughs> it's the lens. This lens doesn't even rate in the same class as uh, those lenses I've called the cat's ass. Uh, this uh, lens uh, falls into a new category of uh, amusingly called the tits. Uh, I love it, and uh, I pack it around more than I do the pancakes. Now, this is obviously, you know, value-wise, obviously, this $50 a pan, $50 or $60 Nikkor pancake, of which I've got over a dozen of them, is exquisite, and it is a faster lens at f1.8. However, there's a lot of vignetting at 1.8. Well, not a lot, um, but a significant amount. But there's also vignetting on uh, the 40 millimeter. Now, uh, the Voigtlander also make a 20 millimeter f3.5. However, that one actually has some, uh, that particular lens has some heavy vignetting all the way up to uh, f8. Um, so that is a, a derogatory mark against it, as other people have noted. I've had the lens, I thought about purchasing one, but I've got so many 20 millimeters, I just decided against it. Here I am mounting. Actually, let me show you something. This is how far the lens will extend at its uh, closest focus at 15 inches and to infinity. Um, I forget the exact uh, throw. The throw is from infinity to closest focus. The exact distance, um, the throw, as it's called, between a minimum and infinity, but it's not a lot. And here I'm mounting the lens hood. Very fine threads, by the way. You normally keep this on here all the time. Like I said, it, uh, the lens hood is uh, is flared inward, so since it's so short, I mean, uh, this would actually keep you from having your pinky finger stick a fingerprint on the front of the lens since it's so short on the front of your camera. Is this lens worth $450 new? The answer is absolutely yes. I mean, it's uh, this, you know, they're, you know, we could uh, say these older AI and AIS lenses are like an old Mercedes, and this is just like an old uh, high class BMW. I mean, there, there's actually an old Rolls Royce. I mean, there, there's nothing, you know, uh, it's exquisite. There's, there's no way to actually describe this lens. So it's worth every bit of $450 new. I actually uh, wonder how much longer the company is going to be. I was going to show you the little box. I had to dig up the box. I didn't think I had it, but I still have the, the box for it. Little tiny box. <laughs> little tiny box that this little tiny frigging lens comes in. Doesn't come with anything other than the lens, the lens hood, this little cap, and this macro lens attachment, which screws on the front of uh, the lens hood. Very high precision. Now this is not AR coded, however. So if you think that's an issue, it's not really. I mean, obviously you got an issue with flare if you're shooting into the sun, but it's meant as a quote unquote macro attachment. So you can go between 15, min 15 inches minimum to 10 inches, actually just a hair under 10 inches minimum of focusing distance uh, with this. Um, I guess that's it. Um, uh, this lens is worth every penny that it's expensive little price is. 
like I said, I mean, if, if it's 450 high for this tiny little lens. N no, it's not. I mean, uh, this lens is uh, better than anything Leica is currently making, and I, and I don't say that uh, jokingly. Yeah, it's silky smooth, and it's absolute uh, silk sex and sugar perfection. It is uh, divine, and since it has, like I said, uh, CPU contacts on it, and you can use it on any current Nikon a DSLR camera, you know, now or dating back, you know, X number of years. So if you got a cheapy or a dinky Nikon, you can use this lens. So you don't have to manual focus it, obviously, but uh, the camera will know what lens is mounted on the front of it. So it does have a little CPU inside that's telling the camera, hey, I'm a 40 millimeter f2. So you don't have to worry about non-CPU metering with this particular lens. So it is worth every bit of its uh, full price. However, this uh, lens cap is a bit too beefy. I don't particularly like that. It makes it look kind of oddball. They could use a really small Leica cap for it, which is about a third as thick as this, but whatever, that's fine. So there it is. That's the Voigtlander 40mm f2. I can't rate it high enough, and it is worth every bit of what it costs. Thanks for watching. Bye.